And welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. It is Fast Break with Asa Hutchinson. Obviously, the boss is here. I'm Jay Burr. Um, you know, it's been uh, it's been a heck of a month so far. Um, you know, I know a big thing here in Arkansas is the is the duck hunting and things like that. Boss, you have you been able to get out there in the wetlands yet? You know, I usually try to make it out uh, the first uh, weekend of duck season. I didn't make it this year. Oh. Uh, I went and uh, saw my grandson uh, uh, play ball uh, in college. And so I've got to uh, get out a couple more times uh, 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 between now and Christmas. I'll be out there, uh, anxious to get out there. We got some such great duck hunting in Arkansas, but I'll be there. Yeah, because I know you're a big fan of the uh, the duck jalapeno poppers. So we we got to get you something out there. Uh, we will, we will. <laughs> I'll have uh, duck jalapeno poppers on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> That's always exciting and a favorite uh, with the family. All right. Uh, also, too, November, we've we've gone through elections. We talked a little bit about that last time. Let's kind of post game about it now. Um, on, on a on, we'll kind of go national and and local level here. Um, but on the national level, we we didn't quite see the the red wave that a lot of folks were prognosticating. Uh, here in the state, though, it was kind of status quo. I mean, it's it's a red state here. Uh, what what did you kind of think? What were some of the surprises that you saw? Well, uh, let, let's talk about that, and this is important uh, on the election, and you're right, there wasn't the uh, national red wave that a lot of the uh, pundits uh, predicted, and that's almost refreshing about our democracy, that the people always have the final say, and they did. That's it. And uh, so you were look at it, though, and uh, that's that's true, there was not a national red wave, but you look at it, uh, in Arkansas, there was the red wave, mm-hmm. uh, because we had uh, we gained seats in the uh, General Assembly. Yeah. Uh, all of our Republicans uh, won re-election at uh, every level. Uh, we elected, uh, again, a Republican governor, which is the first time in history that we will go from one Republican governor's administration to another second governor's uh, Republican administration. So uh, it was a good year in Arkansas yeah. on the Republican side. And uh, I congratulate all the candidates. And, you know, we had some really, quite frankly, some very good uh, Democrat candidates were out there. Sure, yeah. It's just that we're still a conservative uh, Republican state, and uh, that red wave still impacts us. You know, I was, uh, as you know, in Iowa. Iowa had a red wave. Yeah. Uh, they had uh, two uh, Republican candidates, one for attorney general and one for state treasurer, and they both beat longtime incumbents. Uh, they uh, won a Republican uh, congressional seat. Zach yeah. Nunn uh, defeated the incumbent Democrat. And so Iowa had a red wave. And so the point is that uh, while there wasn't a national uh, Republican surge, uh, there there was red waves in very specific parts of the country. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened in the election was not a rejection of Republican ideas. Okay. Uh, it was simply a rejection of particular candidates that uh, did not run well, uh, got into controversies, uh, were looking to the past and disputing the last election, yeah. election denier. And that made a difference in uh, those races uh, in Pennsylvania. It mm-hmm. made a difference uh, in, uh, obviously, uh, Arizona and on uh, across the board races that we should have won, but we didn't because of how the candidates ran uh, the races. And so there's a lot to be said for the fact that uh, we did uh, win control of Congress, which is going to make a big difference in blocking a uh, last two years of uh, President Biden's uh, first term, some of his progressive agenda sure. and spending habits, and uh, and hopefully they can accomplish some things, but primarily they'll be able to uh, uh, block a leftist agenda that uh, President Biden might have. My favorite thing, though, is is when I was watching the national guys, and you have the map guys. Like every network's kind of got their map guy, and it was it was actually kind of fascinating to see in in some states that are traditionally very blue that there is a growing Republican sentiment. And uh, like we saw it in in New York, uh, I know Oregon was another one of those states. Uh, Nevada was another state that that's starting to sort of lean red and when, when they've been fairly traditionally blue. And I think that kind of goes to your point of people aren't rejecting the ideals of the Republican Party, but more so maybe who they put up. Jay, you make some good points there. 
You look at, you do. Uh, in New York, uh, Lee Zeldin was the uh, candidate for governor, and he didn't win. But my goodness, nobody thought he would get over 40% of the vote. And clearly there was a surge because of the uh, uh, crime wave there yeah. in New York City particularly. And so there was a, a stronger Republican uh, turnout there in New York. Oregon, you mentioned, uh, absolutely, there's a really good Republican candidate for governor. We thought we had a chance to win. Uh, we didn't win, but that's a very, very deep blue state. And you see Republicans that are surging in California even. Uh, they had a, I believe it was a state auditor's race uh, statewide, and the Republican didn't win, but got a higher percent of the right, vote yeah. than expected. So I think you can say that there is uh, some uh, growing uh, opportunities for the Republican Party in some of these uh, traditional uh, blue states. And and I guess kind of bringing it back home here, um, you know, we, we were kind of 50-50 on a lot of the, the ballot initiatives. Uh, you know, even when we were talking about them um, in the office, you know, oh, this one might pass. I wouldn't be surprised. None of them pass. Oh, were you a little surprised to, to see that? And even uh, for three out of the four, just the margin in which they didn't pass. I was uh, a little bit surprised there, but, you know, you look back on it and I think the voters made up their mind that uh, there were a couple of ballot initiatives they didn't want to have passed, mm-hmm. and uh, they didn't want to risk getting confused. They just voted against all four of them. Uh, now, that's not across the board because there was uh, what the Religious Freedom Amendment uh, issue that was closer. We mm-hmm. got, like, 48, 49 percent of the vote. So there were some close races, but uh, all of them went down, and uh, I was really hoping that two would go down, uh, the marijuana initiative and yeah. then the uh, legislature calling them into session. They went down uh, with heavy margins, and then the uh, uh, other two were a little bit closer. One of them was the uh, 60% threshold for yeah. uh, passing a constitutional amendment that failed, uh, and then the, the third issue or the last one was the uh, religious freedom one that was the closest of all of them. We're uh, considering, you know, Kind of the the overall attitudes towards marijuana. Were you a little surprised that one was as defeated as soundly as it was? Um, you know, I think a lot of people had also really said that. You know, looking at that one, it wasn't a great bill to begin with. But but even the concept of of recreational here in Arkansas. Um, you know, were you, were you surprised at that one a little bit? Maybe I was surprised by the margin. Yeah. I knew that uh, the uh, those that were opposed to recreational marijuana had momentum going into it and. Momentum is something I usually uh, weigh as the heaviest factor as to how it's going to turn out, and uh, but but the margin was uh, much larger than I expected. And what is significant is that Missouri passed it. Yeah, uh, Missouri passed a recreational marijuana initiative, and Arkansas didn't. And of course, if Arkansas had passed it, we'd have been the only southern state with recreational use of marijuana. And so I'm glad we it failed. Uh, it's likely to come back, and we're going to learn from what happens in other states. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, not in Arkansas. Um, let's let's kind of go back to the national scene here, real quick. Uh, and I want to kind of you know get a little more insight to your thoughts on you know sort of some of the the Trump backed candidates, and you kind of touched on it a little bit. You know, some of the candidates, you know, we're we're bringing up you know they're election deniers. That they're, they're kind of Agents of chaos is, I think, is another term that you like to use. Um, do do you think that maybe the party is starting to get away from that, or, or will this sort of be that that point where, on the national stage, the Republicans maybe start to get away from sort of the, um, you know, dividing rhetoric and, and some of the bravado that that maybe the Trump era sort of brought. Well, we'll see. But let let me say first, uh, you know, Donald Trump did so many good things as yeah. president, uh, a relationship with Israel and support of them, moving the embassy, uh, you know, the Operation Warp Speed in terms of uh, accelerated development of the vaccine. So, you know, there's a number of things you can say he really got right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, his post-election and his, you know, uh, uh, how he's handled it after the election just... Uh, is the wrong direction for America, for our democracy, and people understand that. And then he's become uh, more erratic, uh, more explosive. And uh, and so 
people look at his legacy and say, you know, we're very proud of much of what was done, but our country and our democracy can't handle another four years of that chaos. Sure. And so, and it was illustrated by the midterm elections where uh, you had a number of the candidates, many of the candidates that he supported, he got in the campaign for. And the big thing was that he got invoked himself in the Republican primary and chose the election denier, uh, the pro-Trump candidate, and they couldn't win in November. And that's the lesson. We have to nominate and elect candidates in the Republican primary that can win in November. Sure. And uh, he he showed that he was not going that direction. So, uh, you know, there there's a price to be paid for the Trump endorsement, and that is one of the lessons from the from the last midterm election. All right, let's bring it closer to home here. Um, you know, we're we're kind of getting towards the end of of your term here. Um, have you given that any thought at all? <laughs> getting to the end of things well, here, I sort of have to. Uh, <laughs> Every day, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, it's just been a wonderful eight years, and and uh, as to what we've been able to do together. Uh, but at the same time, eight years is enough. I don't, I don't particularly like term limits, but uh, in this case. Eight years is fine, and I'm delighted and so excited about Sarah Huckabee Sanders as governor-elect. Yeah, uh, She's going to uh, really, uh, she's got a great uh, reading uh, priority uh, for schools, and so we're anxious to see how uh, her leadership uh, unfolds, but to have a lot of confidence in that. Uh, and so the transition is fine. You know, it's amazing. I look, uh, even uh, with the next month and a half that's right. left, uh, there's a lot, uh, lot to do still. Uh, whenever we've got a couple economic development announcements yeah. that's still ahead, that we're going to be announcing uh, new jobs in different parts of the state, uh, and that's exciting. And when I say we announce it, that means we've done a lot of work to get there. Uh, so that's a that's a part of it. Uh, you know. Secondly, uh, you know, we've got. Uh, I'm I'm chairman of the Education Commission of the states. Yeah. And so I'll be uh, uh, going out there to preside over uh, multi, all the states. All 50 states are part of this, and uh, being able to promote computer science uh, na- nationally and That's telling cool. the Arkansas story. So those are just a couple of things that are still on the horizon. The other thing is, I have two major reports that are still due uh, that will be coming in. One will be uh, the Women's Commission yeah. uh, that uh, will receive a report uh, from them after really an amazing uh, series of, of meetings across the state, listening to people, setting priorities, and understanding the challenges and barriers that still remain for mm-hmm. women in the workplace and what can, uh, what can we do better. Uh, so we're going to receive that report. And then my council on future mobility yeah. uh, will be uh, finishing up their work, and I'm anxious to get their report. And while you say, well, this is the end of your term, but uh, these are recommendations that will come out that uh, will allow the legislature to consider what needs to be done, what more can be done uh, to, ad- to advance Arkansas in these areas of uh, future modes of transportation. And by the way, I think you saw that, Jay. Uh, Arkansas got ranked, uh, what was it, second in the nation in terms of drone readiness? Yeah. You know, our laws, our policies. And so I was very pleased yeah. with uh, that national recognition that Arkansas is leading the way in terms of new modes of transportation and delivery. So get ready. Uh, drones will be flying around here a whole bunch here. But um, one thing, uh, you know, not to get too legacy uh, here with it, but I know one of the big things. That, that you did during your term was transformation. Um, it, it, government was kind of a hodgepodge when, when you first came in and you kind of streamlined it, cleaned it up. You're getting some, some not only some, some state money savings, but, but just the efficiencies in which the state now works. Um, you know, when, when you put that together in, in that, that regular session and then to now, you know, is it, is it working the way that you foresaw it working? Uh, it is indeed. And uh, let me just go back uh, somewhat. Uh, transformation of state government 
and greater efficiencies in state government's always been a priority of mine. It wasn't the first term, but I knew we needed to restructure yeah. uh, the executive branch, and so I made this the pri- one of my priorities of the second term. And we, uh, leading up to uh, the, my second term, we had town hall meetings across the state where yeah. we illustrated the need for transformation. So we made our case because I had 42 different departments of government state government reporting directly to me. Uh, That means that if I gave each of my uh, agency directors Mm -hmm. one hour in the office a week, then that means I've filled a 40-hour work week just meeting with people. A little overtime there, too. And that's just once a week. And so you have have to have better managerial control. And so we reduced that number of 42 uh, department heads that report to me down to 15. Yeah. And, uh, And we reorganize the cabinets in line with that. Uh, Department of Commerce is a good example we created that has banking, securities, insurance, uh, uh, workforce, uh, mm-hmm. all a part of that. And, and, it, and it, it makes sense. And so uh, a couple of things have been important with that transformation. First of all, it happened before the pandemic hit us. Yes. And it allowed me to have better managerial control over state government during a pandemic and a critical time for our state. I relied upon them. It made government work better and and allowed me to focus on some really emergency matters too. But then secondly, we wanted to improve the delivery of services. And so uh, we want to do better for the citizens of Arkansas in making sure that they can get uh, uh, the coordination needed between the different agencies and there's not the bureaucracy uh, that uh, you need to call somebody else. We can't handle that. Always a part of uh, life and government, but this streamlined uh, those services. And then we do save money. Uh, One important fact, Jay, that eight years ago, uh, you looked at state government, the number of employees, and because of transformation and reorganization, greater efficiencies, uh, we have 3,000 fewer employees today in state government than we did eight years ago. Wow. That's a 14% reduction. Yeah. And nobody had, nobody was laid off. Nobody was mass fired. We just simply, if somebody uh, retired and went into the private sector, uh, we just looked at it and said, can we combine this with another position? Can we use technology? Can we be more efficient? Yeah. And uh, it's worked. And so, uh, I'm very proud of the transformation and the way it served the people of Arkansas. Now, what were those cabinet meetings like before transformation? I mean, like you said, 42 folks. Woo! I mean, you may as well just be giving speeches up there. It's kind of, man, we're having a convention. So in the in the governor's mansion, there is the Great Hall. Yeah. And the Great Hall uh, is where we had to have our cabinet meetings. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, because you had 42 people. Yeah. Uh, and And – all great, and it worked, but it works better whenever I can have my 15 cabinet uh, secretaries in the governor's conference room. We've got our cabinet table, and it's just worked really well, uh, and they've done a great job. Uh, it's it's definitely been one of the, the interesting things to, to watch and see how government has uh, evolved over, over time. But, um, you know, we're getting into the holiday season now, and, um, you know, I'm a big proponent, uh, you know, it's peppermint season now, so I'm a big peppermint mocha guy, but we're not going to necessarily get into the coffee orders. But what are the, some of the things that, uh, that that you guys like to do around the holidays? You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, Thanksgiving is really a, one of my favorite holidays. Good one eating because, holiday, yeah. Well, it's eating, but it's a little bit more laid back. Right. Uh, Christmas can get a little hectic with uh, all the gifts, exchanges. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Thanksgiving is uh, a little bit more time of reflection, and uh, uh, and so I will have a family together up yeah. in uh, northwest Arkansas. Uh, my family's grown, so they get a little scattered, but we're going to have uh, a good group uh, uh, in there in, in Rogers. And, uh, you know, we cook a fairly traditional uh, Thanksgiving meal. Right. Uh, we'll watch a few sports. We always go out and throw the football. Got to throw the That's, ball. That's uh, you know always a tradition for us, and uh, and then we'll just spend time with the family. So uh, pretty laid back. How about you, Jay? What are you doing? Man, it's a lot of the same. Uh, you know, one of the I, 
I don't think mac and cheese is a traditional Thanksgiving thing, but we've kind of started to make it that way because I'm a big purveyor of mac and cheese. Um, you can't go wrong with mac and cheese. Well, I prefer pumpkin pie. Big time pumpkin pie guy. And so that is something I look forward to. So Susan will make a um, a uh, uh, a cake uh, that is everyone's favorite, but I always want the uh, pumpkin pie as well <laughs> with a little whipped cream on there. What kind of cake she make? Well, I was trying. I just went blank on it. <laughs> she ain't got to know. It's about a good that, one, right? though. It's a good one. <laughs> oh man. Uh, now, now with the with the grandkids, I mean, some of them are a little older, so you know, I know you throw the football around, but do you, you know, you try to check them up, maybe a little one on one too, show them that you still got it. Uh, well, I can throw the ball pretty well, but let me tell you, they're big and strong, so uh, we just have some fun. It's just nice to get out there and, uh, and enjoy the fresh air, and I hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving and safe. There's a lot of people that are traveling. Yeah, and, travel's kind of picked back up again. Well, it is, and so that's another reason I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad to be home. <laughs> there you go. Um, but going back to one on one, um, I, I know you recently uh, were up there in Northwest, and uh, you got to to shoot around in Bud Walton. I mean, it's it's not the Convocation Center in Jonesboro, but I mean, it's it's a nice place to play ball. Uh, well, it is. It is. It was a practice arena there at. Uh, Razor with the Razorback basketball yeah. facility, and uh, it was sort of a treat. It was right before, uh, what the Friday before the uh, game uh, was at LSU that we we played oh, on football, that football. on that yeah, Saturday, yeah. and so uh, we had a, a great time there. A bunch of guys from Little Rock went up there to play that I play with every Friday, right? And uh, uh, you know the sad thing is. Uh, you know, we actually got a videotape of us playing. Oh. And we watched a little bit of it, and we said, we got to be quicker. Uh, but, you know, the fun part for me, and I, I say that jokingly, we actually played very aggressive full-court basketball. But uh, I got to play with my grandson. All right, uh, yeah. Grandson Asa uh, the fourth, who came down from Springfield, Missouri. And then my son Asa was there. So three Aces were out there, and I'll tell you, we held our own. So you guys were all on the same team, though, right? We were that day. We were. <laughs> you know, we sort of stack at it when I've got a <laughs> six seven grandson and a six four son. We uh, oh well, we're yeah, rocking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys got a pretty good sixth sense about each other. I would, I'd imagine now. Uh, we know how to pass the ball to each other, <laughs> and, and we we know how to shoot. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, uh, we'll call it a we'll call it an episode right there because uh, I mean we're just having way too much fun now, so we got to get back to work here, but. Uh, again, uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We've got it on all the, the typical platforms, uh, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, all that stuff. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We kind of run this here. You can probably see some of that fun video of them uh, playing at Bud Walton Arena. So we'll make sure Jer- Jeremy here behind the scenes has got some of that. We'll, we'll kind of make sure we'll show the folks what's really going on uh, behind the scenes here. Um, but boss, uh, I hope you have a, a good uh, holiday season. Uh, I know I'll be working hard through the holidays, so don't you worry about anything here. So we'll, we'll make sure you have a good time. Hey, great to be with you, Jay. Uh, thanks for your hard work through the holidays. That's it. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time on Fast Break with Asa Hutchinson. <laughs>